Everybody, welcome to week 13 of graduate statistics at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, today, we will continue to explore the topic of linear regression. But while last class we looked at the case uh, that we called a simple linear regression, where you had one explanatory variable or predictor and one response variable, to the case where multiple predictors are introduced to create a more complex um, model of the response variable that you're interested in. So let's dig in and begin with our first example. Let's imagine that you'd like to predict birth weight of babies from a variety of variables that you can measure during pregnancy. So in that case, um, while last class we had only one, uh, again, one exploratory variable and one uh, response variable, now we'll extend to the case where you can have a number of explanatory variables. Here's one example where we have one, two, three, four, sorry, one uh, response variable, birth weight, and one, two, three, four, five, six uh, predictor variables, right? These predictor variables can be a combination of numerical and categorical variables. For instance, uh, weeks of gestation is a numerical variable. Height of the mother is a numerical variable. Age of the mother is a numerical variable, while whether or not the mother smokes is, um, is a categorical variable. So we will explore in this class one um, simple problem with two continuous variables, and then we will explore one in which we'll mix a continuous variable and a categorical variable. But the logic doesn't change really from one to the other. But we'll explore both so that you can, um, that I can help you guys think about uh, these models in these two circumstances. Ready? So we will get started. Imagine you want to predict the weight of books um, based on its volume and cover type. Because you can imagine that the weights of books will be related to to its volume, because what else? But the relationship will probably be modified by whether or not the book has a paperback cover or a hardcover. Does that make sense? So you decide to collect some data. So you collected data uh, on a number of books, let's say 15 books, where you had their weight, you had their volume by multiplying these three dimensions, length, width, and height, and you also had information on the type of cover that the book had. So you want to run a model to see uh, how volume and cover type relate to weight. So those again are two. The in blue we have uh, in blue we have the predictors, so we have two of them this time. And in brown you have the response variable. Okay, so we'll run a model, we'll work on a model where we try to determine how these two predictor variables relate to weight. And this is the case where we have a categorical variable and a, a numerical variable, okay, together. So let's see what patterns uh, we see in the data by using a scatter plot. When we do this kind of scatter plot, volume over weight, we're using um, color to map to the cover, right? Because it's not a continuous variable. So what we're seeing here is that there is there seems to be, as expected, a sort of linear direct relationship between weight and volume, such that books with higher volumes also have higher weights. Books with smaller volumes have lower weights, right? So as volume increases, weight increases. As volume decreases, weight decreases. So that's a direct relationship. You should be expecting a positive R uh, coefficient here of kind of large magnitude because you can imagine a line here in between these points. Um, the deviations from this line would not be very large. So somewhat strong relationship. 
there is something that's also interesting going on with hardcover and paperback, such that hardcover books seem to be on the high weight side, right? For similar volumes. If we get here, for example, let's get these two points here, this and this, they have pretty much or very close to the same volume, but the paperback would have smaller weight than the hardcover. Again, these two points here with similar volume, one seems to have, you know, higher weight than this one. All right, so that's the general pattern here in the data, and we're kind of separating and coloring the points um, for different books, depending on whether they are hardcover or paperback. But you see the direct relationship here. So what do we see? We see that weight increases in direct proportion to volume, and paperbacks generally weigh less than hardcover for similar volumes, all right? So if you were to run a multiple linear regression model, you would start with something that is very, very similar uh, in terms of syntax with what we had um, seen last class, right? We have this LM function, the linear model function. We have the response variable here, and we have the predictor variable here. So up to this piece, you know how to, what to do, right? And we have the data set name here. What is new is that we're adding another predictor. So we're creating a linear equation where um, we have the response variable as usual, our y on the y-axis, and we have just more than one x, x1 and x2. And each one of those will have a coefficient multiplying them, if you think about it in terms of a linear equation. And we'll continue to have our intercept. That doesn't show up here, but we'll always have to compute, you know, what would be the expected weight when volume is zero, sort of not concrete, never going to happen in real life, but it's just something to set the heights of the lines. Um, and we'll have a coefficient for volume and a coefficient for cover. Um, so again, this would be the equation. In this case, weight will be what we want to predict, and that would be equal an intercept plus a coefficient times volume, which you've seen before. But we're adding another variable, which means that we have a different coefficient uh, that will multiply the variable cover. Remember, cover is a categorical variable that R will code with dummy variables like 0 and 1. Okay, R will call one of the categories, one of the levels of um, this variable 0 and one of the levels of this variable 1. And the output will tell us which one are coded as zero and uh, is playing a role as a reference level. We've learned that last time, but let's recover it here. So here is the intercept, B0. Here is the volume coefficient, which is positive as expected. That's beta one. And this is telling us that for each unit change in volume, weight increases by 0.71 grams because the unit here is in grams. And then we have here R coding the categorical variable cover and it is using, um, it is identifying paperback to indicate how much uh, weight changes on average when you go from a um, hardcover book to a paperback book when volume is kept constant, right? Controlling for volume. So for similar volumes, the paperback, which is coded one, um, will have uh, 184 grams less than um, the hardcover book, okay? So hardcover is coded as zero because it's not showing up here. The other one that's showing up here is paper book, okay? So this you've learned last time. Another thing that's interesting here 
is that we're seeing this important um, metric here, the multiple R squared and the multiple R squared adjusted. Um, and it's good to look at the adjusted because it adjusts for the number of um, variables in the model. So if you add variables and it doesn't add much to the, to the model, you know, R squared just drops more because you have a more complex model. That's not really much better than the simpler one. So the R squared adjusted give us that sense of, um, of how, um, of how good the model is considering that you have more variables in it. Because every time, of course, you add more predictors, you tend to have a better R squared. But um, you also have a less parsimonious um, model. So what R squared adjusted does kind of balances these two things. How well am I explaining the, the response variable given the number of variables that I have? So here, the two variables seem pretty important because it didn't drop all that much from R squared to adjusted. Anyway, so we are looking here that um, this model that includes two predictors together, the two predictors together explain about 92% of the variance in weight of the book. So it's a pretty strong model and it is a significant uh, model, right? I have a better chance of predicting weight with these two variables than if I try to do it by chance alone. That's what this p value is telling us which is sort of expected given how much variance I'm explaining in this case. Now, we also talked about the fact that you, we can also test hypothesis of each, about each predictor independently, because you could have a pretty high R square here, but only one of these variables is carrying the weight of the explanation. You could have volume be a significant predictor and cover not, okay? But in this case, we're seeing that both volume and cover are significant predictors, P is less than 0 0.05 for both, of weight. All right, so all that we're doing here is adding one more, one more variable to our output. And now, as I said last class, um, you could have a full model that is significant, but one of the predictors not contributing much to the model, right? So it makes sense and it's important to look at whether the model as a whole is, a, is significant because it's telling us that our ability to predict the response variable is better than chance alone. Um, but we also want to look at the significance of the individual predictors. When we had one and the model was significant, the only way it could be significant is because that one predictor uh, was a, a reliable um, explanatory variable for the response. But now, it could be the case, one more time, that you had the model as a whole being significant, but that significance stemming from the fact that just one of the variables is a good predictor. Okay? All right, when we come back, we'll dig into this a little slower. So I'm just showing you the overview of what you'll see in terms of output. And now we're going to go uh, step by step um, to try and understand each piece. All right? I'll be back. Bye-bye.